Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be looking at an update, this time for Loki Live. So this one is my, um, live, it's like my face swapping pack. All my face swapping tools are in here. We've got version 5 that came out today. We're going to be taking a look at two new workflows. One of them is Multi 2, the other one is Multi 3. And I'll show you how you can make 4, 5, 6, however many you need. Um, it's a face swapping pack, right? So if we just take a look here, what I've done is I've generated a bunch of images using IP adapter for uh, Laura CNET. I use not the true world and assassin card to get a nice output. And we've got this image here. So what I want to do is I want to swap it. Before I forget, hit that bell. And where were we? So this is workflow number one. Right here. Um, it's a multi-person. So it does person number one, then person number two. Most important thing is the input faces index. So this one is set to one and this one is set to two. And so then when we use the input image here, which was generated also with Flux, um, it's going to do the swap. So let's watch it run. This also supports occlusion. So if there's like something in front of the character's face, like the hat or maybe some hair in the case of a female character, it's going to figure it out for you. Now I run this through uh, Flux Enhancer and then maybe Boosted Upscaler as well afterwards so we can get some more detail out of it. But this is a really nice result. Um, obviously I'm using pre-trained models. So I'm using my Johnson and my Johnson V1 for the two faces. So just to give you a, a quick look at that result there. You can see that's that's the face of my first model. That's the face of my second model. This was um, trained on SDXL face outputs. This one was trained on photos. There you go. Um, and so a lot of people were asking, well, how do you get three faces? And the thing is, it's the same process. So I'm just going to walk you through what's going on here. We're loading the image. All right. Load the image. Load the face model. There's a face model creation workflow in the pack, so you can use that if you need to. Um, there's also a video on that as well in the Loki series. We got the face booster. We can control visibility and code former weight, and you have the choice of code former or GFP GAN, or of course another fine tune. If you there are fine tuned versions, if you dig around, um, then we've got the find the actual reactor face swap, which has got again one and what point five. And it's using the GFP GAN there. All right. Now, there are a few things which I do want to look at, which is detect gender input. And I think that might make the next step easier. But for now, when you've only got two faces, you only need to deal with one and zero. OK. And so just so you know, this is one and it swapped the left hand face or the higher face. And then this one swapped zero. Uh, which is the right hand face. Okay, so we basically swapped one and then chained the image into the next one and then swapped the other. And we obviously use the correct characters as we need to. And that is effective. There's a whole bunch of different demos up on the uh, live portrait page, as you can see. We've got a good one here. So this is some action figures swapped with the same character faces in all of these. All right. <laughs> so good. And there's something from uh, uh, SD 2.1 face swapped. Uh, what else have we got? More of my stuff from SD 2.1 face swapped. <laughs> and then this was done with flux. Now I wanted to show you this one because if you can see here in the background, it's actually sharpened up the faces of the people who are just background characters and soft blur. And the way that you prevent that is by making sure that this is muted. But if you have background characters that you want to sharpen up, obviously you can unmute it. So there's the, the reason why um, I put that up as an example so I can explain it here. And then here's the masking helper, which of course checks if a face was partially obscured and then makes sure it still is. So that way, like I said, you can do your hair over one eye and it's not going to like make an eye on the hair. So let's move on to the last workflow. 
Okay, so here it is. This is the three person workflow. Uh, just to give you a look here, we've got this image and we put in there, it's changed the face on the right. So this was input in input face index one is the right hand image. And then input face index two was the next rightmost image. And then strangely, zero is that one i'm not really quite sure why zero um so it went zero one two which is just a bit a bit weird i don't know why i did that and we're going to have a little bit of an experiment now and see if we can glean it but i hope you can understand that it is simply just swapping the uh face model for the id of the face so it detects which face, it assigns a number, and then we apply our face swap to it. Okay. And this takes any image from any model, just load any image in here. And um, obviously you've you've already made your face model. And if there are any rough edges or anything like that, it will come out in a flux enhance or a boosted up scale. Either will fix it. So with the right settings, of course. We have gone over that in the past. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in one of these uh, images which I've just made. Okay, so here we have an image I just made. Now, I'm going to show you how I would go about, um, you know, swapping these faces correctly. So what I'm going to do is run it once. And just because the order is going to be different. So I probably, yeah, the woman's not correct, right? So a lot of people were asking about this. Because we don't know what order they're going to be. So I've made a two person workflow for two people and I've, and it's 50, 50. So obviously if you get it the wrong way around, you just swap it around and now you're good. But with this, it's a bit different because it doesn't go. Doesn't, I don't think it does go left or left, left to right. So this one is ID one and it's the leftmost image. Okay. And then this one, see, I'm doing left, middle, right now. So the middle image is still the middle image, but that's input ID two. <laughs> so it's gone, it's gone left one, two middle, zero right. So I'm still not quite sure what determines the order. But I have got an idea. Um, let's see. If I say detect gender input female on these ones and then detect gender input male, because I know there's two men and one woman, right? So I think what I don't, I've never even used this because I just put the numbers in myself and I get it right. But um, someone asked, so why don't we find out together? So we're going to put that in now. Is it going to figure it out? So male. No, that's still picked and picked a man. Um, um, that's interesting. See what I mean? So this one detect male worked. This one detect male didn't work. So it couldn't detect a second male face. Oh, wait, no, it says female. Detect female. So, right. It, okay. So, oh, that's a bit strange. So basically, this is interesting. But it didn't. So what it's done is I've said female. It's not female, so it didn't do it. But I said male on the face before. And it did still do it. Well, the obvious fix is I can just change the face model. So if I just put Lisa V1 on that one, and then I just come to here and I say uh, Johnson V1. Was that Johnson or Johnson? Which one was it? That one's Johnson. This one's Johnson V1. Okay. Uh, uh, so then obviously I change this to male. And then change this to female i'm guessing what it means is it won't do it if it detects the gender i thought it might have given me two lists to give me ids on let's see 
Okay, so that one's swapped. And then, is it going to figure this one out? No. Oh dear. So in the end, it, well, well, actually, is that just how the character ends up looking? No, surely not. Let's get a preview of the uh, swapped face here. And maybe that will make it a bit more obvious. <coughs> Always debug your stuff. Ah, maybe it's changing that face over there. Hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do then, I'm going to change it to no. Let's change it to no. Because like I said, I thought I'd have a little experiment. I think maybe I should just read up what it does because it doesn't do what I thought it does. Okay. Swap. Good. Oh, yeah, we don't need that anymore. Swapped. Good. And swapped. Good. Okay, so there we go. It works just fine. Um, I would like to point something out, though, here. Uh, we've done a lot of in-painting and stuff in the past. Now, if you were to take this mask, because as you can see here, it's just the faces. If you were to now take this mask and invert it, you could push that into a in-painting uh, where you would vary using control net, um, which is how I made the image in the first place. So over here, I've got this image driving uh, IP adapter, and I'm using my not the true world, and funnily enough, my assassin carb. And somehow that takes it from images like this and this, this. And then when I turn on my detailer, you get images like this. Um, I think there's probably too many steps here, but they recommended 50 steps. I never use 50 steps. I usually use 4 to 12 with Chanel and 20 to 30 with Dev, but 50 does produce some good images, so I'm not going to knock it. just takes forever. I like the speed. Anyway, um, so we've got a two-piece here. You can swap, just all you got to do is put your image in, put your image in, and then hit run. Nine times out of ten, you're good to go. Obviously, you've got your subfolder stuff, so if you want to organize projects, it's going to end up going somewhere in there. One last thing. So this is your final section. Okay, so somebody asked me, well, how do I do four? How do I do five? I'll show you. It's actually really, really easy. So you obviously have to put your image with however many faces are in here. So it doesn't matter how many. It's already come preset for three. Now, let's say I wanted to do four uh, or five. Let's say I want to do five. Yeah. So I connect. I'll, I'll, there's two types of node here. One has a preview on it. So they you only need to save the last image. OK, so duplicate these these ones. So. What I would do is I would move this down and I would control click the middle one. And I will just control shift V, control shift V. Okay. Like that. Don't worry about the groups. They're just, just there to move everything around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect the output to the input. The output to the input. The output to the input okay and then what you're going to want to do is because you don't know which one is which what i would do is i would say uh zero for the first one and then one second one two for the third three and there we go four Okay, so that means we've got, if there, if there were five people, 
what each face will correspond to one of these. And at that point, you load the correct model for the character that you want to swap. So obviously you would know which face you want to swap and then you know which face. So by running it once, whoops, by running this once, it's going to give you, you know, an image and you're going to go, ah, you know, for example, on this image here, I wanted to, let me just, uh, let me just do this real quick so it doesn't blow up. So I want to change this woman's face here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a different female model. So I'll pick Thora. And then it's going to swap it to Thora and then do the rest of them. Oh, my goodness. It changed to a different face. Oh, yeah, because I changed, didn't I? That's me. I changed that. That's me. That's my. But again, if you find it's on the wrong face, you've got two choices. You can either change the ID or you can change the model. Either way is the same result. So I want that one to be Johnson V1. I want uh, this one here to be Thora V1. I want this one to be just not just Johnson. I'll make it to crew. Okay, let's go. Okay. And so there we go. I've got that one on there. And then we've got Thora on there. It's photographic Thora. And then we've got the crew. Looking a bit weird in the background, but yeah, that's that's the crew. So this is what I'm saying. Um, I think we spent enough time on that. Okay. Uh, but I've showed you how you can quickly, you know, uh did I break something? Yeah, I broke something. So that needs to connect to that. I actually broke something. So the, it, the last image was supposed to go into the image and I connected it to the file name line. So that's my fault. Yeah. And then that actually goes in there. Uh, and the image actually goes into that. So the last line has um, a text reroute, which feeds the custom file path. Now, if you just want the images to go in the route, you can just use, just delete this and put a new save node in. It's the quickest way. You know, just literally go, oh, uh, save node, save image, you know, and then just delete this stuff if you don't want to do the custom pathing. All right. Okay. So I've explained how you can do as many people as you want. You could have 20 people and it, you're still able to control each individual face and it'll be fine. There it is. Multiple person face swapping for comfy. You can use this with any of the packs because it's just an image in. Image in, image out. That's something that we're going to be doing a bit more of. A lot more of the workflows are going to be image in, image out. That way you can have multiple tabs and you can just start throwing stuff through different things quickly without needing to have all your memory tied up in an all-in-one workflow. So there it is. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you next time. So memberships are here i've added donator and member the donator membership is just uh you want to support the channel help us grow member you're going to get some exclusive video access and uh check out the join now button for more information